everybody, it's Victor here from Cardiac Wire, and today I'm joined by Dr. Michael Kords. He's the Medical Director of Cardiovascular Imaging at RadNet, and we're going to talk a little bit about his work with HeartFlow and what they're doing here today at RSNA. With that, why don't you introduce yourself a little bit, Dr. Kords? Good morning. It's uh, bright and early here on Monday morning at RSNA. I'm Dr. Michael Kords, Medical Director of Cardiovascular Imaging at RadNet. Um, I've been working with RadNet since uh, September 2024, and things have been very busy when it comes to cardiac imaging, particularly CT. So. Uh, we've been working with heart flow for quite a few years and it's very exciting times. So one of the major modalities we've seen this year increase in cardiovascular imaging has been CCTA. Could mm -hmm. you tell us a little bit about how you're incorporating CCTA at RadNet and also how you've worked in heart flow's tools like Pellac analysis and their FFRCT analysis? The advances that we've had in cardiac CT over the last 10 to 15 years have just been tremendous. Um, it saves so many lives and it's underutilized. One of the problems has to do with access to care. So my work with RadNet really is to make sure that every location that is hardware and software capable, we are scanning coronary CTA. Uh, we use HeartFlow uh, plaque analysis at all of our locations, um, and we've been doing so um, since uh, 2025 uh, when we had uh, coverage for it. And now coming in 2026, we're going to have uh, category one coverage, which is going to really expand access there. So it's been uh, picking up in interest, um, but rightfully so, it's really gonna change patient care. Well, it's really exciting that you mentioned how it's going to change patient care. With all of that summarized, could you maybe give us a little bit of a demo of the software and how it works in your practice? Sure, let's do it. Okay, so now Dr. Cords is going to run us through a little bit of a demo of HeartFlow's plaque analysis software. So I opened up a random case here on uh, the HeartFlow user interface. Um, I'll go through some of the plaque analysis, how I use it in my day-to-day -day practice. And actually something very interesting about this case that I happened to bring up. So when we perform a coronary CTA and a clinician orders it with plaque analysis, generally it's going to be on a patient with chest pain um, that has different risk factors. Um, when they come in and we review those images, they have one to 69% stenosis, we'll perform plaque analysis uh, going along with the uh, clinician's orders. It gets sent automatically to heart flow, uh, processed very quickly, and it shows back up on the user interface and then we can look at the plaque analysis. So on this particular case, um, we have up here on the left, we have the LAD, circumflex, and RCA. Um, if FFR was performed, we also can toggle between the two, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, so as I go through this uh, case, we have the double oblique images uh, here on the right, where we can take a look at the non-calcified plaque within the uh, distal left main, and then we transition into the proximal LAD. Um, we can scroll down, we can give the stenosis percentages, giving a range, um, but what's really important here is in the bottom left. So here you get the total amount of plaque burden in millimeters cubed. And why I said this case was interesting is um, they break it down into calcified, non-calcified, and then low attenuation plaque. Here we have for the calcified zero millimeters cubed. So this individual, um, if they had just had a coronary artery calcium score without contrast, their calcified plaque burden would have been zero. Um, often, more often times than not, someone would have said you're lower risk, we can be less aggressive. But this patient had a coronary CTA where we can actually quantify and, and see the non-calcified plaque. And this case we brought up has 191 millimeters cubed of non-calcified plaque. So if the clinician has this case, um, if they had just done a calcium score, they might've been classified as lower risk. But here they we know that they have higher risk non-calcified plaque that could potentially rupture. So many clinicians would be more aggressive with this patient um, after they had these results. So uh, if we go through the uh, additional plaque analysis, we can go through all the different vessels here. We have the circumflex, um, click down here. No plaque is identified in the circumflex. We can go over to the RCA, also no plaque identified there. So the bulk of the plaque in this patient is non-calcified plaque within the proximal LAD. Um, so again, we have nice uh, straightened MPRs here in the middle where we can scroll down, we can have the radiologist or cardiologist look for varying degrees of stenosis. So it's a real nice way to visualize everything here. Um, in this particular case, um, if we go back to the LAD, here we have most likely moderate stenosis of the proximal LAD. If it was ordered with um, FFR, I can click over to the FFR tab and you have everything within the one uh, user interface. So I can bring up the FFR images here now where I can see the area of moderate stenosis within the proximal LAD with an associated FFR CT value of 0.90. So everything comes together very easy on one interface. 
Thank you, Dr. Ford, so much for that demo. We kind of have a better understanding of how this plaque analysis and FFRCT analysis work. Understanding this uh, software, how has it kind of changed your practice, maybe the way that physicians are referring to your practice and to your imaging centers, and uh, has it improved or changed any of your workflows at RadNet? You know, the, the feedback's really been um, exceptional when it comes to the referring clinicians. This is something that is in high demand. They want this information. Um, being able to actually quantify and characterize the plaque that is there, um, you know, the studies that you know, Hartfuls put out, the side registry, greater than 50% of the time, that changes management. With greater 30% of that time, it was increasing in medication usage, being more aggressive. Doctors have that information. Once they're able to quantify the amount of plaque there, they can risk stratify that patient saying, I need to be more aggressive. Or maybe some of the times, I don't need to be as aggressive as I initially thought I was going to have to be just based on risk factors alone. So it's not just using indirect surrogate markers, looking at lipid profile and family history. We can actually show them the amount of plaque that is there um, and they can do something about it. Dr. Quartz, thank you so much for those insights. It really does give a lot of background and credence to just how valuable this technology is for RadNet in your practice. Um, with all of that, I'm kind of curious about your future looking statements. What are your thoughts about where AICPA is headed and do you have a message to your colleagues in the cardiac radiology world? It's a very exciting time for uh, AI plaque analysis. It's, um, you know, we, we've had this tremendous amount of data that's out there. In fact, um, if you look at CMS LCD, if you bring up most other LCDs, there's a little bit of information. I encourage anyone to Google CMS AI plaque analysis LCD. You will see pages and pages of supporting data to support that decision about how it benefits patients. Um, it's really worth a read, really great information there. Um, message to my colleagues, any location that's performing coronary CTA needs to be offering plaque analysis. It is a standard of care. You need to be offering this. It's covered by CMS. Um, category one code come January. So um, this is going to be for RADNET something we really focus on in 2026. Well, Dr. Cords, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for that wonderful message. I've been Victor. This is Cardiac Wire. Thanks. And thank goodbye. you.